Miami Dade County, we were waiting for three years for ATVs to patrol the beach. Right. First day, I had two accidents. I believe you. After being trained. So guess where the ATVs went? Out. Back to the manufacturer because he was bad accidents. I wanted one so bad that I, I was not going to be riding and everybody else. They brought up the fact that they had five fatalities in Australia, and they thought that was way too many. <laughs> yeah, and we had 15,000, and they had five, and so they put rules in place with the helmets, the training, the bar. They actually re-engineered re it, so if you do get an accident, you're not down underneath it. You've got a bar behind you that's up like a horseshoe. And you fall back into that and it protects you. Yeah, but it's, it's crazy. Like with the with Anderson, we had a couple of uh, UTVs to go and rescue people out in the desert. Uh huh. And I wanted to put seatbelts on it. I think that's a good idea. And they said, no, you can't put seatbelts because your manufacturer didn't have seatbelts. He says, I don't care. It's going to do his physics. It's going to keep you in there. So it took me almost a year to convince them to put them because we had two accidents. Months on it. It's not. I understand from Dave that is now they're putting in the seatbelts on them. Yeah. Right. And they're doing other things, but it's a slow process. And the training, what he said about the training, you find this interesting, was they would say, okay, if you want to be trained, it's $100 extra. Or we'll put another chair or you know, another seat beside you, and that's free. Yes. 
exactly somebody dies because of a hazardous situation in their person. After I've uh, done my interviews for the police and the fire, which my group, I realized knowledge, and remember we're going to say knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. They have so much more available to them today. They have tablets, computers. They, in their vehicles themselves, in fact, they sometimes they don't want to say it, but I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but they do have all the information at hand, readily available. So I do think that the technology today, and I'll talk a little bit about that te technology, um, that first responders are much more, are better trained, more knowledgeable, and they are actually communicating, at least for Las Vegas, better with the community. Okay, so first I know we don't know what we're walking into. Oh, last night, paper. I read an article about two police officers and two cowboys chasing a bull down the road on the northeast side of the Las Vegas. <laughs> so as a police officer, you never know what you're going to be dealing with, so I'm just saying. So weapons, fire, chemicals, radio, or people. <laughs> Joe, have they taken the, uh, in Denver they have encrypted the communication from 911 to the field police and fire? Right. So nobody can have that here too? Yes. And um, here's the other thing. They've got a couple of new little things that they have, like when officers in trouble. There's a button now that they use that brings an open mic. Yeah, before they they had it, but it was not activated because of the price and all the stuff. They had it for years. Okay. But now actually it works. They yeah. have to be careful in the mic and the radio both. Yeah. They have the press oh, oh, oh. and they show the location of the radio. Exactly where they are. Yeah. And she wow. had to do that once. Yeah. Yeah. Soup. She, huh? Soup. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. Yeah. They, and actually, they have the body cam now. Of course, um, they have a new taser. The taser's got four cartridges. I'm not going to all this, but and the reason that's a positive is the taser they had before had one cartridge. So when they used it, they had nothing left. Now they have them with four cartridges. So they can, if there's more than one person, they can do And that's a safety factor. Did you hear about the new system in the vehicles when they park in the side of the road to fill out the and all the stuff? Right. They, they leave the car running and they press a button and they start working, right? Right. And if somebody approach with the same sensors that will sense when you're backing up, yes. in the front and the back, you will send somebody walking towards you and turns on the lights. It flashes. It flashes the light and the horn. So it tells you somebody's walking towards you, so the officer can actually react. Wow. So I was impressed when I saw the system. So the highway patrolists are using those. I don't have that in here, but yeah, she did tell me about that. Yeah, that's very nice. So, but that is, because they have to be on guard. I mean, look at what happened two years ago. We had two firefighters at lunch. Or not firefighters. We had two police officers at lunch, and somebody came in and shot them both right then and there. It was it, it really dealt a blow to the city for that to occur and to the police department. So they have a lot of things in place now that they did not, um, and they are getting much much better at it. So first on scene, we go back to. Okay, I talked about, we're going to talk about the police, we're going to talk about the fire, we're talking about the radiological. And what I want to do is I compared all three, because all three are emergency responders. And they all three do many similar things. So we'll talk about that. So police, as I mentioned, first on the scene, which are the ones to uh, access the scene first, of course, their highest hazard could be gun fire, it could be an explosion, it could be chemical. We lost, back in the 70s, we lost 
in LA due to a chemical release, within six months, the first responders in the police and the fire department, 70s, early 70s, they were gone. They died. They were exposed to a chemical, I can't remember what it is, but they were gone within six months. Okay? Nowadays, when anybody responds, before you go in, before you see it, before, if you're coming to a building right now, they have those tablets that tell you what's inside of it, what's the company. You know, they actually have so much information right now on those tablets that they know beforehand what they're walking into. They're using the, the drones, every single department is just using the drones. Yeah, I know. We have the drones first, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> actually, they used our drones a couple of times. So now they're buying their own, and now they can actually fly into their body. But yes, they got the drones back there were over talking them the other day. So they have a lot of technology available to them. Um, they also have the trainings extensive. I was shocked. It's really six months from the time you go in to the time that you're released on your own. And that was amazing for me since I was pretty much released in two weeks back in the 1970s. So to have them actually do that much training was amazing. Part of it, they have classroom training, of course, and then they have the warehouse that they have that has the storefronts and everything else, and it's got preloaded events for them to go in and practice. They have virtual reality, reality-based. They have, they have to take a thousand hours of defensive tactics. That's a lot of hours. They have weaponry for 80 hours, and the emergency vehicle, all we have to do is pretty much qualify it. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. <laughs> you have to do a little more than that. Um, and for emergency vehicle operations, 40 hours training. Now, I'm at Mellis, so right across the street is the speedway. And I see the police vehicles there training constantly, going fast. And they do chase scenes, they do it all. And it's amazing to watch them. They're very intent. And you better not fail. Because <laughs> you'll be doing it for a long time. So, yes. But, uh, oh. In some places, uh, our paramedic are all the same person. Is that correct? No. Oh, I think it is. Um, our fire department is fire. Our police is police. Now, here's the big thing. Just bringing up the speed, we're talking police right now. Oh, okay. We're going to talk fire. We're going to talk. I started a little bit early because I figured everything was tired. I'm just saying that is nice. So, anyway, in regards to the fire department, they still have EMTs. Yeah, now, for example, Henderson, that's one of the requirements before you apply. Everybody else would be able to get EMT. Yeah. Yeah, and at one time that was not required in the fire department. They only had a couple of people that were EMT when I was doing it. And, but now everybody has to be an EMT on their own. Uh, what they do is they go through the police academy first, they go through the classroom. They then have the next four months where they ride with somebody. Okay? They don't actually are not the ones in charge. Person they're writing with is in charge. The cell training officer. Uh huh. And then, let me see if that's in the next. I'll go back Three cases. So, for that one, they are just accompanying the training officer. And, oh, by the way, on these three phases, there is.
And then the last four months is they actually get another area again. They get all over Las Vegas. And in that area, they're shadowed by the training officer in a vehicle where they will actually say they are a trained police officer. So they want to make sure that whoever gets through this process knows what to do. And I think that's exciting because I didn't have that when I was done. <laughs> I was just showing up. <laughs> so I, I thought that was very interesting that they did that. And the fact that they They have this huge training facility, which is not only used by Metro. Metro built it, but all the surrounding agencies have asked if they can use it. It's a big, big warehouse of storefronts, storefronts and everything else, including the fire departments now have asked if they can use it. And because of the October 1st, they have this liaison now with all the cities and all the Say we need to communicate. And one of the things came out of that is, I'm just saying this because she told me this after I wrote it up, <laughs> is that they make sure that even if off duty, they have a yellow vest that describes who they are. Because on October 1st, there were law enforcement fire people there that were on their own time and they were helping and doing what they needed to do. But they felt when the whole group uh, got together and discussed it, that from now on, let's make sure our people are visible so that we know who's who. So I thought that was interesting. And after October 1st, a lot of things changed in California because all the officers that were here in the, doing that, Building and everything. Some of them got hurt. And workers yes. from over there, they did they, they, uh, the workers from cases. So Sacramento got involved and says, Oh, you're going to cover those officers. They were included, but they were helping. So now they're going to send you know, thing coming out of Sacramento saying that if you're all included and you get hurt while well, helping, like if you're all included, right. workers from no cover. That's so. very. That's very. That's very. They that is good information. They will, they will the cover because we had a lot of people out of to all the way out. They didn't want to cover them for their injuries oh. or anything when they were helping. So they changed it that right now. Oh, that's good. A lot of things have changed. I, I didn't get everything from her because, of course, I saw her after <laughs> I have an officer, Laura McPike, who's a patrol officer. She's also a community person, and I was going to talk a little bit about that. I talked a little help thorough the training is. The other idea is recurring training. It's not a one-time training. If somebody shoots a, a person um, out in the field, they want to first, of course, get a counsel. They always get counsel. But they also want to make sure that they are not going to be afraid to be able to protect themselves again. Because it's tough when you shoot somebody. It's psychologically so what they've done is they put the preloaded events in, and so if people are even, not even if they've shot somebody, or they've just had a difficult time with um, an event that they had to respond to, they have put in different scenarios so that person, that police officer, can go back, practice in the warehouse, get comfortable again with it, because it's tough, and you don't want to be scared when you're out there. You don't want to be frozen in, in place. Uh, they did it, and uh, we have a couple trying to attack us and say, no, we need help. And the 
they will do a better job with that gun. Would be right. Did take the caliber of the firearm they had at the time. What? Did they did take the caliber of the firearm they had at the time. I did not ask that question. All of that person? Do they did take one caliber that that you can buy? So they said nine yeah, they were cows. But they put 40, but they just started removing 40. Now they're going back to 9 millimeter. Everybody approves that. So you still buy your own, just so it's. You still buy your own, but you have to follow the space that, you know. Like if I buy a 44 mag, I can't carry that one. Uh, even you have a AR 15 or M4, they call it, you cannot put any type of uh, EDL tape or none of that stuff. They want just the main gun with the normal the size. Oh, okay. Yeah, because if somebody gets killed, they were gonna take the gun to take your your side and everything, you lose all your money for investigations. So Yeah they do. They do but there are policies in there for what to buy and what to put on. I didn't ask that question, but I, I assume that what we were issued on back in the days of old we were issued a gun. That's right. It was easy. That was issued a gun. All right, flashlight, um, and of course they, they can determine the flashlight. The tourniquet holder, they usually get a big heavy flashlight. Tourniquet holders they now carry, gun holsters, and they bring their own personalized chests. It's a ton. Um, the things you find in the police car is always going to be a trauma kit, flares, fire extinguishers, of course radios. I remember I talked about the red button and the open mic you can have if you need to. Um, so they do have radios. They have body cams on the, on, the, on the person now. And, of course, their tablets, which is also their emergency GPS. GPS and a radio. We have a radio that we carry with you. Oh, go okay. back. Okay, there's one thing I want to bring up with the fire department. I thought all their stuff was cool, and most of it I had seen before, but they've gotten better. The Kevlar vests are a necessity now. Um, for my responders at radiological, if they're going out with the Metro, Kevlar vests is required by them too. So, in 2005, I thought this was very interesting. We're talking about technology, how we keep saying um, knowledge is power. And the police officers have the knowledge, they have the training, they have the information at their fingertips. The other thing they have is they now have the Las Vegas Metropolitan um, All Hazard Multi Agency. I think that was probably even when you were still here, right? The All Hazard Operations Response Team, better known as Armor. And what this task force brings across Southern Nevada including Las Vegas, Henderson, North Las Vegas, and the Nevada Department of Public Safety, is they can detect, mitigate, and investigate chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive incidents without going in. Okay? What they have is an army of supporting robots and cyborgs. Um, their team brings a unique set of skills and knowledge from a tech person to technical ex expertise, including scientific uh, personnel. Uh, the detectors are placed on the robots, or the industrial hygiene um, equipment can be placed on the robots. So, um, they can be going into an area without them going in so that they know what that hazard is. They also have one that's called the remote tech Wolverine. I only think this because I thought it was cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one can knock down a door. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I know, that's what I thought too. So they do have those um, in it, available to them. We were just discussing before you walk in, they have UAVs, unmanned air systems now, that they've been training on for a while. They can also have detectors and things of that nature. Um, so that they don't have to go in. They also had one incident where they had a small robot, robot that they had a hostage situation, and they sent a small robot in to talk to the prisoners to make sure they were okay. Oh, and they could hear them, the robot. They would speak through the robot, the robot would speak back. Oh, wow. 
So very cool. Very cool. So I thought, okay, they have advanced since my day. I'm happy. <laughs> and I'll move on. Now we're going to go into fire response. I spoke to Chief Dees, who's actually the Nevada test site fire chief. And I work with him closely a lot. So I figured we'd better to ask. Um, and I agree with them, having been in the fire department we have. They do have a mindset. Their mindset is on really putting out a fire and doing what they can do, stay healthy, do all this stuff. They have a mindset that's a little different. Um, they are there to help people. They actually do want to be there. And actually, the police officer I met did too, so I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. Um, once again, they have the PPE. Did anybody sit in? On uh, Gabe's yeah. 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 the ammunition. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. No, Dave North's. They brought up some very good points. Ammunition it. in your house for sporting use is not as dangerous as you think. Exactly. The only way it gets to be dangerous is in a fire. In a actually in a. Itself. Yeah, the, 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 the itself, yeah, yeah. the fire will get a load of gun, and the fire will get a load of gun. Other than that, the itself doesn't hardly penetrate anything. Yeah, because they're not dangerous in a fire situation. It's very localized, too. If one goes off, one, one actually could go off, and the others would be just fine. Right, because it's local. Yeah. Local yeah. 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 So anyway, but I bring that up because of the, the PPE, the turnout coats that they wore, because when he was talking about it, he's going, this one guy, and I'm thinking, has anybody ever seen Mythbusters? Okay, you know how they always put the dummy up and put the PPE on them to check it out. No, no, this person, this firefighter, he walks up, he's got a turnout coat. He's watching all the ammunition go pop, 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 in the in the thing. Right in front. Yeah. <laughs> and I was localized. But he's just going up there and you know, he had a couple of hits in his turn and he said, Oh yeah, no problem. No problem. I turn out coats. He would penetrate it. And I'm like, you need to watch my clusters. <laughs> yeah. Put the dummy out there with the turn out. Oh, you want the dummy? Yeah, it's dummy. Where are you, Joseph? So their PPE is very advanced anymore. Their SCBAs are amazing. I used to do an SCBA when I was in the fire department. In fact, I used to take it. I got the one. I was the one that got the flapper on the face tube. Very cool. That, and that, in that day and age, that was unheard of. And the reason they did that, nobody could hear anybody in the fire situation. But they have much better stuff. They now have radios. They can talk to one another. If you're in a fire situation, you can still talk. I think that's kind of amazing. This is the new one with everybody's going to have their own camera, their, their own, uh, how do you call that? During the fire and smoke, you can still see through walls. If there's movement, if there's... Oh, like, like the entry scan or something? Yeah, the thermal. Thermal scan. The thermal scan. Is it, is it included in the ICDA? Thermal? The thermal scan, that's, that's the pretty wall. amazing. So, so, yeah. so I think that's fascinating that they've got all this wonderful new PPE that they did not have in the past. That they can, they're much they more prepared when they go out. And they train for that too, by the way. A lot of training is in place. They have specialized responses with the hazmat team that actually go in. Um, business emergency plans, multiple businesses are supposed to be given to the fire department. Uh, they are what they got from chemicals, so that you know before you walk in that door what chemicals you could be exposed to. And of course, the natural thing now is we'll be wearing a CBA just in case. Right? But it's probably a lot lighter weight than what I was in. It's lighter weight. Yeah, it was heavy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> The other thing they always have now is a safety officer. Somebody's always designated at, well, at least for the test site, 
as a safety officer, and it's usually a senior engineer or a captain that's been trained to be that safety officer. And at that event, that's his job. His job is to make sure nobody is exposed to any hazard that has not been sub-shaped way or form and re recognized and somewhat mitigated. You can't always mitigate everything, but you know you need to know what you're walking into. Okay, so they have locked documentation in place, of course. Equipment that is very, very sensitive. 
And in this day and age, it's better to be prepared. So on New Year's Eve, uh, before New Year's Eve, we fly over the city of Las Vegas. Over the Boston Marathon, we fly over the Boston Marathon. We record anything, we survey everything. Our planes probably have survived.